Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. Over the course of the Testing Garden Assumption series, we've been able to look into and investigate a number of free and local resources. We have been able to establish that autumn leaves help add a wide variety of essential and beneficial elements, and comfrey and used coffee grounds add some with a decent NPK. They all have immediately available effects, but over time continue to release more, providing a steady stream of nutrients to your soil and plants. Today I thought I would test another common material that may be generated in your kitchen every single morning. A stimulating morning drink is a very common practice worldwide. Where coffee is popular in North America, tea is said worldwide to rival if not exceed consumption levels. Tea is essentially steeping a plant to extract flavor into hot water. As a byproduct of this process, you are often left with used tea leaves. I thought today we would test the claim that using tea leaves in the garden can help to fertilize your plants. I have already completed the sister episode to this one, where we took a look at used coffee grounds and found that the science supported their use in the garden. I'll put a link in the description below and at the end of this video. In order to test this assumption, we submitted a number of samples to Maxim Analytics for analysis. When this suggestion came through for evaluation, I wasn't sure where to start. I grow mint for my tea, but don't have much experience with tea past that. So I asked a few friends, and Aaron from the UK offered to help. Aaron is an organic gardener, whom has recently moved to a new allotment. He was kind enough to provide me with two samples of tea. P&G and Tetley's are the most popular brands of tea in the UK, and likely represent commercially available teas the best. In order to investigate this, I sent in three samples to the lab to test the hypothesis that tea leaves provide essential and beneficial elements. For this, we did a total metal scan, NPK and pH. Sample 1 was of unused tea leaves, while sample 2 was of used tea leaves. I followed the instructions given to me by a friend from England on steeping and water temperatures to produce used tea leaves. A second hypothesis that came up as we were working through this was the use of cold tea as a liquid fertilizer. So, we took a sample of the tea that we had just made and submitted it for the same analysis. We have spoken a number of times about the essential and beneficial elements that plants require. We know that plants require 18 to be present in soil, of which we ran analysis for 15, leaving out silicon, sodium, and chlorine. These were left out as the analysis packages are different, and this method is consistent with our other products that we've tested. In order for the numbers to be statistically valid, it must be more than 10 times the detection limit of the test. Of these, we found that both used and unused tea leaves had 8 of 15. The data shows a number of the results for these elements have results lower than 10 times the detection limit. This indicates there is likely trace amounts, however a reliable concentration is not available. With the trace elements, tea leaves had 12 of 15, missing cobalt, molybdenum, and selenium. Next is NPK. NPK represents the percent molecular weight of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium within the material tested. If you'd like to see how we've calculated this, there's a link in the description below. The analysis showed that the unused tea leaves had an immediately available NPK of 0 0.011, 0 0.275, 0 0.29, and the used tea leaves had an immediately available NPK of 0 0.011, 0 0.101 and 0 0.988. Over time, as the material breaks down, nutrients will be released from more complex molecules and will be able to enter the nutrient cycle, adding more value over time through composting or as use as a mulch layer. So tea leaves add both macro and micronutrients to the soil. So next, let's take a look at the pH. Unused tea leaves reported to have a pH of 4.61 while used tea leaves had a pH of 4.84. Both are lower than the neutral reading of 7 and have a similar reading to the pH of a tomato. Over time as the material breaks down, the tea leaves will have a reported pH much closer to neutral. Even if it is able to transfer some of its weaker acids to the soil, the soil's buffering capacity should be able to neutralize it, resulting in no sustainable change to the pH in the soil as a result of the addition of tea leaves. As I mentioned earlier, we did have the tea run for available NPK 
trace elements, and pH as well. Although the tea did have trace amounts of 9 of 15 beneficial and essential elements, they are in much lower concentrations than the leaves themselves. The NPK is also considered negligible, while the pH is reported at 6.6 .6 and is close enough to neutral to not have a significant effect on the soil's pH. In summary, used tea leaves are a great free and local resource to use in the garden. I will be using whatever tea leaves I generate in my mulch layers and compost, and if they're in a bag, I'll make sure to remove them from the bag. If I do have cold tea, I will likely still use it in the garden, but more so as a water source as opposed to, say, a weak organic fertilizer. On the next episode in the Testing Garden Assumption series, due to be released on the first Friday of August, I will be taking a look at compost teas and extractions to see what they're made of and if they live up to the claims as an organic fertilizer and increase bacterial numbers. Thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.